When we think of a city of music in UK, Liverpool is the first city which comes to most of our minds. It's just not as as, as advertised and as portrayed as like Liverpool was with Beatles. In fact, Birmingham, the second largest city of UK, is known as the birthplace of heavy metal music. I think it's all down to the fact that you know this is where heavy metal started. We're going on a journey of exploring the roots of world famous bands like Sabbath to see how the music influenced nowadays generation. The, the first band I ever listened to was Black Sabbath, and that was due to me to my dad. Birmingham, city of a thousand trades, city of industry, factories and poverty, city of rock and heavy metal music. During 1960s and 1970s, legendary bands have been formed such as Black Sabbath and Judas Priest. Majority of them grew up just in the earshot of factory sounds. Well, there's a number of reasons uh, why uh, Birmingham was the centre of, of heavy metal or, or really the, the, the main home of, of heavy metal. When you talk to the bands, they'll say that they were working in factories in the foundries. And in, the, in, the, in those days, the factory foundries, you'd hear them every day, all day. Just the rhythms of the, of the uh, forges and the big machinery making these, these just rhythmic banging and, and uh, noises. So there's a sense that their work surroundings played a, a huge role in that, you know, that continual heavy metal bashing. Major reason, really, in terms of uh, the sound of heavy metal is Tony Iommi, as I said, worked in a factory and he cut the tops of his fingers off in an accident and went home and uh, he stuck washing up, um, which you, you know, the squeezy bottles that you get your washing up from to do, to do your, your, your dishes. He stuck the ends of those, he glued those onto the ends of his fingers as replacements for the, the tips of his fingers he lost. And he played music, uh, the guitar with that, and that gave it a very distinctive sound. So there's a different sort of th sorts of reasons why you know, the sound, certainly Black Sabbath and heavy metal, was around Birmingham that time. John Michael Osborne, or to the rest of the world known as Ozzy Osbourne, is one of the key figures that Birmingham is particularly proud of. Lodge Road, number 14. That's the house where Ozzy spent the most of his childhood. I think I can still feel the spirit of heavy metal. The godfather of heavy metal was born on the 3rd of December in 1948 in Aston and attended primary and secondary school in Perry Bar. Now we are walking down the Albert Road, the one that Ozzy used to take every day to his primary school. Prince Albert Primary School, the one that Ozzy used to attend. It's still here and still gets a lot of students coming in. Ozzy was the one who formed the band Black Sabbath together with his friends in 1967. Noticing the excitement of the audience being frightened, the band decided to adopt the heavy style of music. I would start a history of Black Sabbath with the point at which the four of them got together. So the four members of the first time the four members of the band actually played together. And that would have been round about um, summer, late summer um, 1968. Um, when Tony Iommi, who was the guitarist, and Bill Ward, the drummer, teamed up with um, Ozzy Osbourne on vocals and Geezer Butler on bass. So it was two pairs of lads coming together and they played together for a little while. The name Black Sabbath comes from a film, an Italian horror film, which came out in this country in 1964. And I think in particular Geezer Butler was the member of the band who was uh, the most widely read. And he had seen this name Black Sabbath around on cinema posters and probably seen a book of it and probably seen it in magazines and so on. And to him it just seemed like a good, a good name. And uh, when they adopt that identity of Black Sabbath, um, things started to, musically they started to, it all started, it all started to fit into place for them. I'm now standing next to the crown which is considered to be the most historical venue in Birmingham due to its legend in the past. They say Ozzy Osbourne used to spend most of his time here hanging out and performing in the room upstairs. I decided to meet Lorraine, 
the landlady of the Crown and Scruffy Murphy's pub, to tell us more about the history. It used to be called Henry's Blues House um, many years ago, and it was one of those first places that Ozzy played. And as you say, if you've seen the poster that's still there, Rainbow UFO. Um, but it's been derelict for a very long time, from the 1970s. And people have tried to get it sorted and so that we could uh, refurbish it and get it back to the original. But it's all down to the brewery and they're not forthcoming with any money at the moment, so that's a shame. You were showed where the um, bare knuckle boxing ring used to be. Um, that finished in the 1930s, 1940s. Uh, the actual building was a hotel at some point. Um, and then, obviously, as I say, in the late 1960s and 70s, they, that room on the right-hand side, where the, the boxing ring used to be, was left. And they concentrated on the room where you saw the posters, um, built the stage, etc., etc. And Henry's Blues House was sort of born, um, and it lasted for X amount of time. And then I said it was taken over from the uh, skinheads and the punk venue and the mods downstairs and the upstairs was left and it's been derelict ever since. Nowadays most rock and heavy metal fans gather to this place called Scruffy Murphy's. It's been one of the best rock pubs in UK since its opening in 2001 and now it's the only rock pub left in Birmingham. The main idea I, I guess, um, originally it was, a, it was called the Pen and Wig uh, before Scruffy Murphy's um, and the proprietors, when they took it over, Lorraine and Paul, who were the, still the original bosses now, they realised obviously that a lot of local metalheads were hanging around in here, so they just mainly decided to turn it into a metal pub. We try to embrace like as much as we can in terms of, of what's going on in Birmingham metal-wise and, and bringing in fans from, you know, we'll do after parties and pre-parties for all the metal shows that go on in Brum. We're just trying to continue and, and let... And, and let people know that, that this is where it all started and um, just trying to keep Birmingham on the map, I guess, um, in terms of the heavy metal map, if you like. Scruffy Murphy's is a perfect place for bands to perform and showcase the talent and music. One of them is a band called Diamond Lil from Overhampton. The new version of a band was formed in 2010 by the combination of previous members Harry and Jamie coming into contact with Midlands hard rock singer Ellis. Despite having problems with the first drummer, Diamond Lil managed to find Austin, who brought energy and freshness to the band. Since then, Diamond Lil has been playing all over the country and even produced a video clip. Uh, well, my name's Jay, I play bass and did background vocals for Diamond Lil. I'm Harry, I'm the lead guitarist. I'm um, Ellis, I'm the lead singer of Diamond Lil. My dad actually came up with the name. Um, the story of what he told me um, was that it was probably a complete lie. It was probably wrong. I hope um, not. Yeah, because it was quite cool. Um, yeah. Was that it was a, a prostitute in the Western age, in, and what she'd do, she'd sleep with the uh, cowboys or whatever, and then she'd kill them like, afterwards, and so I was like. <laughs> so as you know, Birmingham is a birthplace of heavy metal music. Has this influenced you as a band? Yeah, 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 definitely. yeah definitely. I mean, the, the first band I ever listened to was Black Sabbath. That was due to me, to my dad. And uh, from a musical standpoint as well, some of the uh, techniques that I use on playing bass, I, I attribute a lot of that to Geezer Butler. Um, from Black Sabbath. It was a massive, massive influence for myself and for the rest of the band, I think. So. Well, the, so actually, like, a lot of um, bands that are like all, all of us, like everyone's been influenced by Black Sabbath, in my opinion. I mean, at the time when Black Sabbath came out, there was nothing else like them. Everything was quite happy. It was like mud, uh, Slave was around, you know, even earlier than that, it was all very happy, sort of psychedelic rock. And then Black Sabbath came out with this sort of gothic, satanic edge and they bought heavy metal around there. If, uh, you ask any heavy metal band, and if they're not a fan of Black Sabbath, there is really something wrong with them. Just to think that this one city in the whole world has created like a worldwide music sensation, it's amazing. But it's, it's influenced us all. When, when I first started listening to music as well, it was like Black Sabbath, ACDC, all that, that sort of stuff. After three. After three. After three. After three. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> Birmingham, 
city of thousand trades, city of diversity, cultures and music. Although Liverpool is most of the times put forward when we speak about culture, Birmingham also has a lot to offer. As long as there are people who spread the word about the history of heavy metal, and places like Scruffy Murphy's where bands can perform and showcase their talent, Birmingham will always remain the home of headbanging Brummies. <laughs>